On the 27th of April, 1985, the Royal Australian Navy's former flagship, the carrier Melbourne, left Sydney on her last voyage, towed away to a ignominious end in a Chinese shipbreaker's yard. In spite of a few vestiges of rust, Melbourne retained her dignity to the end, as the grand old lady she was. During her service, large sums were spent modernising her. However, these refits served to extend her effective life into the 1980s. Although not a modern ship by superpower standards, right to the end of her career, Melbourne provided her air group with a viable platform to project Australia's contribution to sea power for peace. Melbourne's departure removes the last tangible reminder of the Navy's former glory. When Melbourne and her air group were operational, the RAN was numbered amongst that elite minority of the world's navies, which operate fixed-wing aircraft at sea. With Melbourne's passing, a significant defence capability has been lost. Melbourne was built as the name ship of the Royal Navy's majestic class of light fleet carrier. She was only partially complete at the end of World War II and work was stopped. Following her purchase by Australia, the ship was modified to include all the latest technological advances, angled flight deck, steam catapult and mirror landing site. Melbourne first commissioned in 1955. Equipped with sea venoms, gannets and sycamore helicopters. These remained in service until they were replaced by the more potent combination of Skyhawks, Trackers and Wessex.
this is seeking lead. Hot. Sonar contact 074, 2460. Classified enemy submarine. Over. During her career, Melbourne was the innocent party in two collisions at sea. She also had accidents, but probably less than her fair share. These saw the name Jinx Ship applied by the largely uninformed media. Rear Admiral Martin, a former commanding officer, refutes this label. For more than a quarter of a century, Melbourne and her squadrons have shown the flag, participating in international exercises and visiting the Far East, the Pacific and Indian Oceans, England and the USA. She did this in a way no other RAN ship could hope to equal, as both diplomat and deterrent. An advertisement to Australia's commitment to regional security and cooperation. Her versatility was proven in the aftermath of Cyclone Tracy. The people of Darwin will long remember her. For over 25 years, Melbourne was that little piece of home away from home for Australia's fleet air arm, the aviators and their aircraft. During her service, Melbourne and the 150,000 officers and sailors who served in her built up a tremendous esprit de corps. She was overworked, used, abused, admired, cherished, sworn at and loved by those who are privileged to be one of her ship's company. The official statistics are a great compliment to her successive crews. She steamed 868,893 miles. 
she spent 62,036 hours underway. She carried out 35 overseas deployments. She achieved more than 100,000 fixed wing landings. And she had no fatalities in her last 16 years of flying operations. A world record and one envied by other navies. The ship has gone, the memory remains.